Hi, it's Jill at Willie Cottage. Uh, just seen me a few minutes ago, probably, on, on my Batty Club for Junes. Uh, yes, still wearing the same clothes because it's the same day. So, um, I've been planning this content for a, quite a while now, and it's a breed study of sorts. But I find, as a fibre artist and dyer and, and a textile, to an um, extent, producer, that whenever I'm looking for fleeces, which I seem to source a lot of on Facebook, on a couple of groups from there, there's the Spinners UK group and there's the Greasy Fleece Marketplace UK as well. Um, I seem to find that not many producers will put a little bio about themselves and then not many people actually ask them any questions about how they got into it, do they have a large flock, um, are their fleeces hand sheared, or are they electronically sheared? Um, what else information am I looking for? Is it just a hobby to them? Is there a specific reason as to why they're breeding these sheep? Are they doing it because they want to sell the sheep on for meat? Or are they typically looking to be able to sell the fleece as well? Especially with breeds such as Wensleydale and Tex... Uh, Sorry, Wensleydale and Teeswater fleeces, and then you've got other long haired ones like the Leicester, and you've got Gotland sheep as well, which have lovely long staple lengths and make the most gorgeous locks as natural before you even dye them. Um, so I'm hoping that you might follow me on this journey. Um, it's something I might do as a every other month or bi monthly um, video situation where I do I'll find a little bit of information from the the breeder and producer that I'm buying the fleece from a bit of background information from them or something like that and how ask the questions if possible if they're willing to, to participate in this um about what the what they're doing and what their plans are for the future as well so I have managed to source from one of the spinning UK pages a lady that is um, selling some Usant fleeces or Ushant, um, which is actually a micro breed sheep or one of the smallest breeds of sheep in the world. And it's originally from Brittany, but I'll go a little bit more into that information in a minute. So the lady I got it from is a lady called Val and she's based down in Bodmin. Now, she told me that she's been breeding sheep for over 40 years and she was originally known um, as the Woolly Shepherd and she sold the company back in 2012 and now only breeds Usan sheeps on their own but has predominantly white breeds which is brilliant for me because it means I can dye that but that's not to say I couldn't dye the white or the browns it just tends to be sometimes with the darker fleece like a brown it doesn't take dyes very well it's quite stubborn against other dyes I mean, I can if I want to dark a pigment like a, a blue or a black or something like that, then I, that's what I generally use my, my brown wools for. So, yeah, so she was originally the owner of Willie Shepherd and did that for 16 years, selling her wares. And she said that she really enjoys the spinning of the Usant wool because it's really fine wool and it's not much Kemp in there. Now for you that people out there that are new to spinning or to the fibre world, Kemp is an expression to describe the type of fibre. So you could have a fibre that is very brittle with chalky white um, weak fibres um, which is an impurity in the fleece and it will um, it will actually make the fleece quality a poorer um, fibre to work with. Um, generally, the type of fibres, that um, wool fleeces that are associated with a high camp, high camp value will be like mountain sheep, for instance. So you've got your swale dales. That's a very brittly wool. And to some people, they're known as guard hairs as well. So you will find some fleeces where you'll have two layers of coating. So you've your undercoating and your upper coating. And the upper coating is the bit that you really want to try and get out because it doesn't take dye. It will not take dye for love of money. I have dyed uh, Welsh Mountain Sheep and that's got a lot of kemp in it with the guard hairs on the top. And when you've dyed it, you've got a really strong colour throughout the fleece but then you'll have these bits that are really quite defined and the, you can see the zigzag on them and the... And the they cut, it's pretty obvious what they are and then to sit and pull them all out can be a bit tedious after a while because they are itchy on the skin 
but that's not to say that you'd be certain breeds that you can't actually spin with these fibers depending on the breed of sheep and what the micron count is as a general rule um but it, as i say it reduces the quality of the wool so i'm going to give you a few examples of wool fleeces that act like that so you've got i've written down these ones so we've got the welsh mountain and we've got swale dales are like that your black faces are like that and they've got generally as a, as a general rule according to the british wool board a micron count of 35 plus will give you a harder um, a tougher kemp fiber texture to the fleeces which then generally means that that wool is best qualities would be used for things like um weaving rugs um or making peg loom rugs you could do things like that with them because it will felt um a tad or once you've woven it and it's back together then once the wear and tear and everything else that you've gone through the process then it makes a really good quality hard wearing rug and for us right there that have got peg looms then even better because it's not an expensive wool it's one of the lower qualities of wool on the market um but then you've, it's hard wearing and it's resilient so you could it's actually some sheep um are actually sheep fleeces with that type of kemp fleecing from the mountain range um can be used for insulation as well as carpeting which is i mean absolutely great i mean you could weave with it as well um, you can make table runners and you could make table mats or heat resistant items that you use every day about the household. So what else have I learned about? So I've been doing a bit of research myself. I've never had the privilege of using this sheet before. Um, so I do know that it's from, originally or, originates from Brittany, a little island off the coast of Brittany called Usant. Or it can be pronounced Ushant. So it's uh, U-S-H-A-N-T Otherwise, another local nickname that we use in, this UK, in the UK is the Brent Dwarf So the fleeces are generally about 1 kilo to 1.7 kilos Now I've got, I'm really lucky when I found this lady She had three left and she was quite happy to sell all three of them to me the lightest one I've got from the one of her sheep was only 700 grams And that's the fleece, I mean it's not much bigger than a fireside rug. It's absolutely adorable. So I've got this one spread out oh, on my table here. And it's not massive. I mean, if it can sit on top of my work table, then it's got to be pretty small. Um, it's really, really soft. Really soft. I'm, I'm chuffed to bits with it. I really would love to make myself something from this. So it's got a... It's got, oh crikey, it's got a staple length of about 8 to 10 centimetres. Now, I've got my ruler out here. So, I would say that this is probably a second cut. It's definitely not a shearling. And that's sitting just shy of four inches. So that's about right, I would say, in, in my books. And then also, when you pull the fleece sections off, it creates a triangular um, lock. So let me just find a piece. So if I'm to, let me find a really good bit here. If I was to pull this, you're looking and you can never quite find it. So I'll take a clump off and I'll turn around and come a bit closer. So if I was to take a section of this fibre off, so like just grab this here and pull that off. And it's actually got a triangular, triangular lock. So you could quite easily um, spin that as is and then wash it up afterwards. And it actually makes it really easy for carding. So your hand carders because you get these small locks and you could pull them all off a section at a time and just take your time doing something like that. So, yep, the Usna, it's actually a really small sheep. So the males, so the rams, actually only get as tall as 20 inches or 51 centimetres to the shoulder. And the females are about 18 inches. Now, the males do have horns and they twist outwards. Um, but the females are actually polled, which means that they do not have their horns. Um, and polled is a generalised term. I'll get into it later on in another video with a different breed. But polled generally means that it's an animal that its breed does produce horns. But the females for this at the, 
at this time do not have any um so it's a rare breed and they very rarely have twins but their baby their you that use their lambs are absolutely adorable i will be adding some little pictures to this video so you can have a look but there's one picture i found of it's a pair of wellington boots and this little lamb and is no bigger than a flaming grasshopper it is absolutely gorgeous now they do come in white they come in black they come in gray and they come in um browns um but the lady as i say that i sourced this from she predominantly has the white version of these of these sheep so the fleece fleeces may be um as in quality wise so they're generally single coated but they have been known to be double or third coated which means that they've got guard hairs and now they're really really hard to sheep they have been left when they were first found uh, back of the 19th century they were as i say living on this little island just coastal island and they were obviously battered to the elements but the sheep were actually regarded from the by the locals for their fine wool and that's what they're predominantly bred for so the locals um from the island would you get all the wool from the sheep and they would actually weave their clothing and that would be the traditional clothing would be this dark woven woolen clothing um is what they would do and i read i read an article about the city of paris the local government there actually um bought a flock of sheep to um pasteurize the grass areas in the city so whether that's true or not, I don't know. Now, I know that these were predominantly, um, they were actually running, uh, going into extinction at the beginning of the last century. I say, yeah, the 20th century. So they were going into extinction in the 20th century and then they were discovered by some French people who managed to salvage the breed. And now that they're being um, bred in various countries in Europe, Germany, France, obviously, Scandinavians now they are short-tailed sheep they've not been docked they're just naturally short-tailed and the oh, I was going to say the the guard so yeah so you can end up with the guard hairs which is on the top of um, the upper coat but the soft one I mean it is seriously soft now they say that this is a micron count of 24 for the under section which is this bit that I've got here I don't seem to have any separate guard hairs it's literally coming as one strand so oh look at the length of that that would spin up an absolute dream it just clings on and there's actually can you see that crimp on there it's got a really really nice crimp a gentle crimp i would say not too frizzy so i think that would spin up an absolute treat um so it's easy enough to separate the guard hairs or the upper coat if you've got two coats on there depending on i suppose where the sheep's being bred as to it needing an extra layer if i suppose if it lived on the coast it's going to need that second that first layer for penetration for the bad weather and then going into the um the bottom layer to keep it warm and dry um it spins really lovely apparently and i'll do a test of this in another video um and it's supposed to it takes dyes really nice it will spin up lovely into a woolen or a worsted weight, especially if you're spinning with the guard hairs. Some will fall out, but it will it will turn up really, really nice. And it does felt, which is interesting. So usually it's used for either weaving once it's been spun, or it can be used for items such as socks and mittens and hats. So generally an outerwear type of garment, especially if you spun it with the Kemp fibres in there, because it will create a little bit of a halo. So also, I found a bit more information that from its past that it was suggested that the breed was actually brought to Brittany by the Vikings and they were found on the island and then later in the 19th century they were discovered and as I say, they were raised for their wool more than their meat though their meat, because of the pasture land that they actually graze on it's right on the coast and it's very salty flavored grass like the we have a breed of sheep here in the uk that are solely bred on like fenlands or a salt marsh area and i think it's down south but i'll have to look into that a little bit more um so the meat actually is quite sweet tasting it's supposed to be quite a delicacy of that type of lamb meat um naturally they've got short tails and they're docked 
almost disappeared in the 20th century and managed to be rescued from extinction. Um, I also read that there are small flocks over in America now turning up. So if you're over in America, there's definitely on there. Now, I have found a link and I will put it in the description box because in the UK and in the EU, they are still on the at-risk register for heritage breeds. Um, and if you go on to, let me just find the link. Right. So for the UK, USANT, so O-U-E-S-S-A-N-T, -S -S Sheep Society of J Great Britain. Or you can go to www.usant.org.uk. you find a bit more information on there. And also you can find breeders that may be looking to either sell their stock or well, sell off the stock to certain, you know, sell, you know what I mean. Um, and also maybe be able to source fleeces for yourself if you'd like to have a try. Now I will be selling this fleece in sets. Now, I have looked up a couple of pricings for these and people are selling them in America for 50 grams for the equivalent of £8 and 100 grams for the equivalent of £12. Obviously, the more you buy the, the thingy. And 250 pounds, uh, sorry, 250 grams, that's a lot of money, for £25. Now, I personally, I think that's expensive. I think that's really, and I don't want to do that to you. I'm not going to do that. What I've want to do is a 100 gram pack or a 200 gram pack or there'll be 150 gram pack set available so there'll be 100 grams of this wool in its natural form washed and carded that's one and then two 50 grams i will be doing one will be blended with a plant-based fiber it could be silks it could be um, plant fibres like rose or nettle or something like that but that will be dyed and so will the second one but I won't be blending anything with that I'll be leaving it as is and I thought it'd be a really nice for, and it means it's inclusive to everybody the felters and the spinners because it is felting it is a felting fibre it will felt easily um, so yeah that's what I want to do so I will be selling them on my website not this video, but probably next weekend I will have a few packs up there ready and I will be doing colour options and I will die to order. Though the 100 grams of these will be available to buy on their own. Um, and I won't be I won't be charging those prices. <laughs> Don't worry. But they, I, I, there's going to be work obviously going into it. So I've got to, I've got to cover my early works. But. It's not going to be those costs. That was the only reference that I could find for price wise. And I thought it was really expensive. And even if it is a rare breed. And I've got three fleeces. So I'm not going to fleece you. Excuse the pun. And I will be using some of this in my batty clubs. Because next year um, from August this year to August 2022. I will be doing each month will be a new breed. Uh, mixed in with plants and silk based fibres and some other fibres. But predominantly it will be one breed. So these will be getting included, maybe August, maybe September's Bassy Clubs. But watch out for these because they will be in there. Um, I'm trying to think what else I've got to say about it. If there's anybody has got any questions, drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer your questions. I will be leaving the link for the organisation for you to go and seek out yourself. But we'll go into the kitchen. I'll just take you with I'll just grab the cables. I call it my selfie stick, but it's not my selfie stick. Right, and um, we're going to walk, walk and walk. As long as I don't stand on the dog. Oh, and, and the other. Oh, crikey. Do you know, I never planned this out properly, did I? So, yeah, so that's one of the fleeces there. So I've got it and it's sitting and it is in, it is in pieces, but it is a short haired fleece. So I wasn't expecting it to stay together, but it sits on top of there. No problem. It's got a little bit of dyeing on it, but... I'll see if it washes out and if it doesn't then it's, it's not a problem it can get dyed over so oh I have got some of it in my sink soaking now so oh there we go so that one's been in there in some just in some water I've got to stick the light on so you can see what I'm doing Right, so I when I wash my fleeces or if I'm doing my locks, I literally just, for the first wash, 
I do hot to touch water and put the oil in there straight away. Nothing else in there, just plain water. So what I'm going to do now is just pull at the plug underneath really gently. I don't want to agitate it too much because, as I say, it is a wool that felt. And at this moment in time, I don't know how easy it felt. So I'm just going to run the tap, excuse the noise, and get the next batch ready. So I do this clean soak and it's just to warm up the lanolin on the fibres and to help reduce some, um, release some of that dirt and there's loads that come out, I've not put any detergent in there, I use, personally I use a cover and I use that for my locks as well. So I just give it a really gentle pushing and try and get some of the water out and it's actually already, it's quite a clean place to be honest. And it's actually cleaned up really pretty well. So I think I might only have to do one more soak and then do a rinse soak. So my rinse soak's just like the first one. I literally just rinse it off in some um, coldish water or lukewarm water afterwards. But I'm just going to do this now. I'm just going to pull this plug out and get the last of this, this dirt out and push that just to do the corner. I don't want to do it too much. And then there's the water heating up now, and I'm going to put some ink cover in this side here, and just let this just leave it there for a second, let the tap fill up. So yeah, this is how I wash my wheels. I always do them in small batches, because who's got the room to be washing anywhere between a two and a half kilo to nearly a four kilo fleece. So I only ever wash say 200 300 grams at any one time firstly it's just ease and i've not got the space to put anything secondly it's just easy to manage i've got it in the sink it's sitting there there's lots of room for it to float around it's not all squashed in the sink at the same time and this is a quicker method than sewing it in um it's sort of doing like uh, leaving it in a bucket with fresh rain water outside that can take anything from a week to three weeks for it to completely do it the natural way which is all fine and well and I might do that with one of these fleeces and see what that effect's like and I might do that later on in the next video so just a, an experiment but this is how I do it so once I've done this second soak but this time with some e cover in the sink and it's nearly done now um, I will let this cool down to hand temperature of getting to that temperature a little bit lighter and then I will empty the sink out and then I will, if it's looking quite clear, I will just fill up the sink with clear water with nothing added into it and that should get the last of the residual out of that sink. So I'm just going to gently open up this. So I would say there's about 300, maybe 400 grams in that. Just give it a little swish around. I don't want to mess with it too much. Yeah, so it sits in there now, probably for about half an hour. Half an hour, 40 minutes, depending on how cold my house is. But I've got the fire on today. I know it's June and I've got the coal fire on. So as you say, I'll leave it in there. Then I'll rinse that off gently um, of the water, drain the water away. And then I will fill up the sink again with some warm water once that's cooled down and then leave that to cool down and then depending on the colour of the water at the time I may do a second quick clear water soak and leave that let it go to room temperature and then I would literally in the pot and dye it because I don't see that for me personally I'm always on a time scale so I don't see the point of drying that fleece off and then wetting it all over again to soak it to get it in the dye pot then to dry it again so for me, that's the next stage I'll be doing for this. So I shall leave you to your thoughts. Please do put questions in the bottom. If there's anything I haven't covered, I'm quite happy to go and find out, research it, find links or whatever. Um, I'm not sure if Val's going to be doing this as an, a full time thing. But if anybody's looking for any resan and I can always reach out to her. She may know other breeders 
that um, do this sheep breed as well and that have fleeces left over. Otherwise, go to the website, the organisation that I've posted in the descriptions below. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up so it encourages me to do more content. The next video section on this will be the dyeing and carding episode. And then I'll be doing a third one which will be me doing a version of spinning and then maybe even a try a little felting i've not done any felting for ages so i think maybe do a bit of felting and see how that goes and do that on my video as well um but if there's any other ways you could think of it's supposed to be i'm not sure if i remember rightly but it because it's been used for weaving it makes really good wool for warp so that might be for any of you guys out there that weave like i do with your hand spun then this might be the perfect sheep for you. And that's definitely something I might try, actually, because I have got my little loom, my little 10-inch Kromsky Presto. So I might have a try of that instead of felting with it. Um, we'll have a try. We'll, we'll have a, a wait and see and see what I get up to, especially if I'm going to hand spin it anyway, and then I can warp up the loom and see how that, that job goes. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So as I say, thumbs up. Thank you very much. Subscribe and share the videos out. I hope this video was useful for you. I'm always a little bit nervous about doing this sort of thing because it's up down to everyone's interpretation. And I just want to do more of a productive breed video instead of just reading from a book. Um, yeah, I did have my notes. You can see me looking down at them just to jig my memory. because I'm not that great at new information. I've got to read it a couple of times. But I hope it helps. You take care of yourselves. Have a good day and see you next week.